So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate just how easy it is to create great looking landing pages using Elementor 2.0. Now, while this isn't actually on release yet, it will be soon. And what I want to show you is something that's going to be coming out in that first iteration of Elementor 2.0. So let's take a little look at how we can start creating great looking landing pages with minimal effort. So if we take a quick look at the page, you're going to see that it's got very common sort of features with most landing pages. You've got your hero image at the top with a call to action to tell you what to do. Next up, you've got some sort of incentives to do it or some information about the company or the product you're looking to sort of promote. We then have some sort of key features of that particular product. We scroll down through and we'll have more information, closing it out with something along the lines of some testimonials from some happy customers to help drive sales. All of this is created with the new blocks inside Elementor 2.0. What we've done is we've taken those basic building blocks and customized them to get it to look the way that we want. And that's what I want to show you in this video. So let's just hop over to the WordPress dashboard and start creating our page. So I'm into the pages section. I click to add a new page and we're going to go through the basics. Now, even though I'm using Ocean WP as the theme, it doesn't matter because we're going to bypass our theme completely and use the template options that are part of Elementor and specifically the landing page option. So let's just call this landing page 2018. And what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the right hand side. And you can see currently we have template and it says default template. We're simply going to click on there and we're going to choose the landing page. Once you've done that, we're going to hit publish to save the changes before we load in Elementor. Now, the reason we use the template option and we choose landing page is because what that does is it completely takes away any of the normal distractions you have on a page, header and footer and sidebars and so on. So if we click to open up and take a look at our page. You'll see we have, in fact, a completely blank page, nothing whatsoever. So we've got a blank canvas to start off with. So once we've done that, we're going to click on Edit with Elementor, and that's going to load in Elementor and allow us to start creating the actual content of our page. Now, this is Elementor 2, so this is going to have some features that you don't currently have yet, but these are wild beta release features. They are going to be in the final version, which should ship hopefully very soon. So... Normal options on the left-hand side, if you're new to Elementor, check out our channel because there are tons of videos on there from the basics of never using Elementor right the way through creating some great looking different sites, pages, the whole shebang is on there. What we're going to be interested in today though is the Add Template option. If we click on that, that's going to open up the templates. Now if you have used Elementor before, you're going to be accustomed to the pages templates. These are basically entire pages, so all of the different elements are all in place. We've also got my templates, which allows us to create our own templates. And you can see I've got one called get inspired block here. What we're interested in, though, is the blocks option. And this is new to Elementor 2.0. Now, what this is, is, is a set of predefined building blocks as opposed to entire pages. This means we can pull in things like call to actions. We can pull in things like hero, sort of FAQs, a whole range of different sort of predefined layouts. And currently, just before shipping, there are 250 different options. So you should have something that's going to get exactly what you want with a little bit of tweaking as a great starting point. If we take a look, you can see we've got the option to choose the category that we want. And you can see everything is broken down into pretty self-explanatory categories, things like portfolio, hero features, and so on. Obviously, we can type in there to filter things out if we want to. We can also add different templates or different building blocks to our favorites by hitting the little sort of heart icon. They will then be displayed in the My Favorites section. Alternatively, we can come over and we can click in the search area and start typing in something we want to use to search against. Okay, so as this is a landing page, probably the first thing we want to do is grab the user's attention and give them something like a hero image with a call to action. So let's just come down, filter these through, come down to the hero section and take a look at what we have. You can see we've got a range of different predefined layers here. And depending upon in the future, if you have the pro version or the free version, you'll see some templates are not available to you if you're using the free version. Anything that isn't available will have pro in the top corner telling you that this is something that's part of the full featured package. So let's just choose something that we think is going to be in keeping. Now, bear in mind, these are just starting points. So I'm going to choose this particular one with the sort of the mobile and some call to action on there. And I'm going to click on insert. That will then insert that into the page for me and allow me to start creating our page layout based around this. So the first thing you notice is that it's sort of contained within a certain area. And I want this to be full width. 
It's very easy. All we need to do is come to the blue bar at the top, click on there, and we can just set this to stretch the section. That will then put it full width, and we now have that laid out the way we want. We can now go in and customize and fine tune and tweak every single aspect of this as if we created it ourselves. So these are just great starting points. So let's just say we don't want to have this background image, we want something else in there. Well, we can select the actual row to make sure that's selected. Come over to the style section and you can see under the background option we've got the image. We can click in there and we can get rid of that and put what image we want in there. So for this example, I'm going to put this silhouette. Click insert, you can see now that drops that into the background but it's still fighting for attention, so I want to make that a little bit more subtle. But what I can do is I can simply come down to the background overlay, come into that, you can see the colors chosen as black. What we're going to do is we're going to adjust the opacity on that to make it slightly darker. Take it out to about 0.8. So you can see now with one simple slider, with one simple alteration, we've changed the look of that. We want to change the image, we could change the image, we want to change the position of the image, we want to put this left and right, we can just flip those around very easily. If we want to change the text, we can do that. So let's just say we want to change this to something more in keeping with what we are trying to do. So all I need to do is just select the element that I want to edit, come up to the top, paste in the text that I want in there, and you can see now that picks up the styling and everything else. Speaking of the styling, we can change that if we want to as well. With the still selected, we just jump over to the style section. If we wanted to change the color, we could do that, the typography, text shadow, and so on. So let's just change the typography. Let's come into this a little bit, and let's just change a few things. Let's just say I don't want this to be capitalized. I want everything to be in full capitals, not just the first letter. Well, we can do that. We just use the transform option, choose uppercase, and you can see that adjusts it. And now we can just fine tune and tweak to make sure that everything fits in place. So very quick, very easy. If we don't like the look of the button, we can come down and change that as well. So I can click on there. We can select an icon. So let's just say we wanted to use something along the lines of an arrow or something. So let's just type in arrow and see what we have. So we've got a range of different arrows. So let's just say we'll click arrow circle right. You can see that now positions it. We can adjust that to put it afterwards. We can change the background of the button, whatever we want. So we can just say, instead of that, let's just say we want download app. So let's just change the color scheme of that. I don't really like the green color. So let's just jump over to style. And what we can do is we can say on hover, change that to a different color. So let's go for blue, for example. I can change the animation to shrink. Whatever I want to do, all those things are available to me. So I can just use all the normal native tools inside Elementor. So let's just say we're happy with that. That looks pretty good. I'll hit update to make sure everything is saved out. So we've done the first part. We're now ready to move on to the next block and start changing that to get what we want in there as well. So let's just come down and say, let's add another template. Again, we'll jump to the block section. And all we're going to do is we're going to choose this first option, which is just one of the sort of gives some information about the company, should we say. So we'll click insert on that. Once we do that, you can see that inserts it in. We can now make whatever changes we want. Before we do anything to that, let's come down and add another section in. Jump into blocks. And this time we're going to come in and just create, get a little bit more creative. So let's just say we want to have, let's take a look at features. That looks pretty good. Let's go for this one, which is the sort of the darker one with the, the mobile app in the middle again. So you can see we get a preview of that. We'll click insert, and there's our starting point. Again, you can see this is sort of contained inside the page itself. We want to make this full width, so let's just click to activate it, stretch that out. I also want to sort of change the position of this. I want the mobile to be on the left-hand side, and then the two columns of actual benefits for it. So simply grab the column, drag it over. Simple as that. Now, let's come in and change this to make this look a little bit more interesting. So we're going to make sure we've got it selected. We're going to come to Style, and we're going to come down, and we're going to choose Shape Divider. You can see we've got top and bottom. So if you've never used the Shape Dividers, they're just a really cool way of being able to sort of apply a shape or something to the top and or bottom of the row that you're working with to get a little bit more interesting. So instead of this sort of squared off block, let's just change that to so the top. We're going to come down, and we're going to say we want to have, let's go for Tilt. And you can see that it immediately puts an angular tilt in there for me. That's pretty cool. I like that. So I'm going to do the same again, but for the bottom. So I jump over to the bottom, choose tilt again, and you can see that now positions everything at a nice angle. But what I want to do is just adjust the positioning of these a little bit so we can kind of get just a little bit more creative. So what I'm going to do is just bring up the bottom angle just to make sure that the phone kind of overlaps it so it just looks a little bit more interesting. So we can adjust the height on there, and we can just angle that to whatever we want. So you can see that's set to, let's say, 260. Now, to make sure that everything looks nice and neat and tidy, we're going to come to the top one as well, 
adjust the height on that one to 260 as well just to make sure that the angles are the same and it doesn't look a little bit weird so there we go that looks pretty cool so we know this kind of overlap effect that's pretty nice the text doesn't look the best in there so let's just click in there and what i can do is i can simply come over to the style choose content and you can see we've got the title or the description let's just change that to be a nice lighter color it just stands off a little better we'll copy that from there and we'll just quickly replicate that on all of the other different sections so we just paste that in so you can see all very quick very easy nothing particularly complex about this but what it is doing is just making developing something considerably quicker than having to go through this manually and set every single element up we can use these as starting points so I like that, but I want to make it a little bit more interesting again. I think the black is kind of boring. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over, we're going to select the row this time, not any of the objects inside it, any of the widgets. Come over to the style section, and we're going to put a background image in there. For this, I'm going to use this particular image. Insert that in there. <clears throat> see, You can see now it starts to repeat it, and it's a little bit bold, so it's kind of overpowering. So let's change that. First of all, let's get rid of the fact it's repeating. So we're going to come down and we're going to say, turn the repeat off. So we say no repeat. Set the position to be center center. So you can see that kind of now focuses your attention on it. Come over the background overlay. Click to choose the background overlay type. And we're going to set this to be a black color. You can see that immediately darkens it down, but it's still a little strong. So what we can do is we can come down to the opacity slider bump that up a little bit so that's now controlling the amount of opacity on the overlay color so the black color we chose and you can see now that kind of drops it down makes it a little bit more subtle within our design again really easy to do really simple really effective if we want to adjust that even more so we can just make sure we got selected come back up to our background and instead of it being the size of default where it looks quite small if you want to you could easily come in and choose something like cover which would make it larger because it'll fill out the actual space of the road that we're working with again entirely up to you you can tweak to your heart's content with something like this okay so let's just add a couple more sections in now and then we can just get close to wrapping up what we want to do so we'll add a template in there again jump to blocks and this time we're going to come down and choose something along the line of features let's take a look in there so we've done a black block with these angles. Let's go back now and choose a white block again so we kind of get that contrast between. Click on that one, insert it, so we've got the next block in there. That looks pretty cool. I can come back in and tweak that to make sure it's got the images and the content and the color schemes that I want in there, making sure that obviously all the fonts and things line up, which is one of the nice things with this uh, particular new add-on for Elementor 2, which is the block section. There's been a lot of thought put in there to make sure that the fonts the styles, everything kind of lines up without you having to go make tons of alterations. So everything is either black or white, so it means that if you want to add color in there, you can do that quickly and easily. So some really cool thought in there, and I hope this is something they'll expand on to create some even more cool looking different layouts for us in the future. So let's finish our landing page up now with a nice set of testimonials to extol the virtues of how good our new application is. So let's add a template in again, jump over to our blocks, and we're going to come down and choose testimonials. So you can see having the fact that these are all broken down into different sections just makes finding the components that you want quick and easy. Okay, so we've got an option here for this black testimonial thing. So I'm going to choose that one. Click insert on that. That's a cool starting point. And we'll just expand that out again. Stretch the section. You can see everything is laid out quite nice and neat, but we can customize that to what we want. So instead of saying customer reviews, let's just say... Some raving feedback so people can see just how good this is and if we want to add other sections in there we can do that very easily as well so let's just say we want to put a little heading in there put that above we can just align that the way we want we can just make sure we're going to do the styling so let's just say customer reviews and what we're going to do is we're just going to style that so we can come back in choose the text color to be a nice white Ooh, leave that as white Typography, we can change that if we want to. I'm okay with the font itself. Let's just change the actual size and styling and so on. So let's just say something around that kind of size looks pretty cool. Okay, I'm pretty good with that. Let's just drop it down maybe to 16. And let's just drop in a little separate a divider line kind of thing, just so we can have some separation between the different elements. Let's try that again. So we can just quickly style that. So let's just put that to be a little bit thicker. We'll just set that to be quite small, maybe 10%. Somewhere there, and align that to the center. And we'll drop the gap down 
and set that to be a nice white color. Actually, let's make that two. Okay, so you can see we can quickly and easily adjust the way things look. Also, let's come into the style section, come back down again to our shape divider, set bottom on there, and we're going to choose an arrow. Oh, actually, let's undo that, sorry. Top on there and choose arrow. You can see it puts a nice little indent that kind of just leads the flow down the page. Again, if you want to put background images in, we want to change any of the styling to do with the actual quotes themselves. We can do that, testimonials. We can go in and fine tune and customize and tweak to whatever we want. These are just starting points. And that's how quick and easy it is to use the upcoming release of Elementor 2.0 and its new blocks function to create pretty cool looking landing pages. So let's take a look at that in action now. Let's just refresh the page. And as you can see, all the changes we've made are all in place. All the different sections, the different adjustments, all in place, all fully mobile responsive, and all fully editable by us. So that's how easy it's going to be to create great looking landing pages for your product, service, or anything else you want inside Elementor 2.0. I hope you found the video useful. If you did and you'd like to help support the channel, please consider using the affiliate links in the description below. It costs you no more money, but it does give a small percentage back to the channel to help us create more great content for you. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback on this video, please pop those in the comments section. And if you enjoyed it, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell notification icon to be told whenever there's new videos added to the channel. And until next time, take care.